The Prophet وسلم, said that on the night he went to Isra wal Mi'raj, he met Ibrahim and Musa and Isa. So they began talking about the Day of Judgment. And Ibrahim was the first to be asked, tell us about the Day of Judgment. So Ibrahim said that I don't have any knowledge about the Day of Judgment. They asked Musa and Musa as well said, I don't have any knowledge. They asked Isa and Isa said that I have been promised or informed that that one of the signs of it is that I will be coming back. And Allah Azza wa Jal knows when that is and the Jal will come. So Isa says that I know that Allah will send me back to this earth and I will kill the Dajjal and the people will then go to their various countries and lands and Ya'juj and Ma'juj will come forth as Allah says in the Quran, Amin kulli hadabin yansilun. From every single valley, from every single area they're going to come and every water they pass by, Ya'juj and Ma'juj will be drinking this water and finishing it up until I will make dua to Allah that they be killed. And so Allah Azza wa Jal will kill the Ya'juj and Ma'juj and the entire world will be stenched with their decomposed bodies. As far as one can smell, one can smell their scent, their putrid smell. I will then make dua to Allah to get rid of these bodies. So Allah will send rain from the sky and these bodies will be washed away. And when this happens, I have been told the day of judgment will be like a pregnant woman who's about to give birth. It's going to happen at any time. And the Prophet ﷺ says, what Isa says, we find it in the Quran. Seems very clear that the Prophet ﷺ is engaging in conversations with the other Prophets. Where did this happen? Did it happen in Baytul Maqdis? One possibility. Did it happen when he's moving up to the heavens? Another possibility. There's another conversation that is recorded. The Prophet ﷺ said, لَقِيتُ إِبْرَاهِيمَ لَيْلَةَ أُسْرِيَ بِي I met Ibrahim the night that I went on the Isra. And he told me, Ya Muhammad, O Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Aqri ummataka minni salam Give my salams to your ummah And inform them wa akhbirhum Anna al-jannata tayyib al-turbah That jannah, its soil is beautiful and luscious Wa anna ha qi'an But it is barren Wa anna ghirasaha subhanallahi walhamdulillahi Wa la ilaha illa allahu wa allahu akbar And the seedlings that we put in this soil Will come from everybody saying Subhanallah, alhamdulillah, la ilaha illa allah, allahu akbar Every subhanallah becomes a tree Every la ilaha illa allah becomes a tree Every allahu akbar becomes a tree It is also narrated and again we don't know when Perhaps this happened in Baytul Maqdis Perhaps it happened after the seventh heaven That he met Malik so our Prophet ﷺ said that Jibreel said to me, O Muhammad ﷺ, this is Malik, the Khazin of Jahannam, the gatekeeper of Jahannam, give him salam. So the Prophet ﷺ said, I turned around to greet him before I could say anything. He was the one who greeted me, so I returned the salam. And he did not smile at all. He seemed completely somber and completely sad. And so the Prophet ﷺ asked Jibreel, why is he like this? And so Jibreel responded that he has never smiled or laughed since he has been created because his job is Jahannam. And once he's seen Jahannam, he has never smiled or laughed. But Jibreel added, were he to have smiled for anybody, it would have been you. He then proceeded onward. So we are now basically above the seventh heaven. He has met all of the prophets, including Ibrahim alayhi salam. And now he proceeds onwards above this. What is beyond this? He said, and then I saw in front of me the Sidratul Muntaha. What is the Sidratul Muntaha? The Sidra is a type of tree that is known for its large branches and it's known for its delicious fruit and sweet scent. And Muntaha means the very end. So the Sidra at the end, this is how it translates into. In English, this is called the Lot tree. And the Prophet ﷺ said, the fruits of this tree were as large as the water jars of Hajar. And then he said, its leaves are like the ears of the elephants. And then I was told, هَذِهِ سِدْرَةُ muntaha." This is the Sidratul Muntaha. In a hadith in Bukhari, he said, Thumman Talaqabi. Then Jibreel continued going up with me until we got to the Sidratul Muntaha. Fagashiyaha alwanun. There were colors basically going up and down the tree. La adrimahi. I don't know what those colors are. And Allah Azza wa Jal Himself says in the Quran, Idhyagsha Sidrata ma yagsha. That when the tree was covered up by what it was covered up with. Allah doesn't tell us what. This is the last thing that the Prophet ﷺ saw before he went above to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we know that everything that rises up from earth 
stops at Sidratul Muntaha. Allah says in many verses that Allah raises things up. The souls, prayers, duas, good deeds, right? Kalimat Tayyib, all of these things, Allah raises it up. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud said that the Prophet ﷺ said, Then I, when I went on the Isra, I stopped at the Sidratul Muntaha. And he said, it is in the sixth heavens. At the Sidratul Muntaha, everything that ascends up from the earth stops there. And it is basically absorbed by the Sidratul Muntaha. And from it descends down everything that is coming to this earth and it emerges from it. So Allah's Rahmah and the rain and anything that Allah wants to send down starts from the Sidratul Muntaha. The Prophet ﷺ said, Farashun min Zahab. So one of the things that is surrounding the tree are beautiful butterflies with exotic colors made out of gold. Ma zag al basar wa ma tagha. The eyes of the Prophet ﷺ did not move beyond that, nor did they go astray. Then Allah says, لَقَدْ رَأَ مِنْ آيَاتِ رَبِّهِ الْكُبْرَى Looking at this tree, Allah says, He has seen of the ayat al-kubra. And if Allah is saying this is a major ayah, then what is bigger than this, right? The Prophet ﷺ said, It kept on changing until nobody can describe it for you. It's an ever-changing tree. Then the Prophet ﷺ said, And at the base of the Sidratul Muntaha, there are four rivers coming down. Two of these are hidden and two of these are open. So I said to Jibreel, what are these rivers? So Jibreel said, as for the hidden ones, they are ones in Jannah. You're not going to see them in this world. And as for the ones that everybody can see, the river Nile and the Euphrates River. Jibreel is telling him that the Nile and the Euphrates are blessed rivers. As for the two rivers of Jannah, they are al kawthar and sal Sabil. In one version, the Prophet ﷺ said, ثُمَّ رُفِعَ لِي الْبَيْتُ الْمَعْمُورِ Then I saw al baytul Ma'mur. In one hadith, it says that, so I passed basically Ibrahim in the seventh heaven, and then I saw Sidrat al-Muntaha. In the other hadith in Sahih Muslim, the Prophet ﷺ said, and then I went to Sidrat al-Muntaha, and it is in the sixth heavens. Imam al nawawi tries to explain this, and it seems like a good explanation. The trunk of the tree begins in the sixth heaven, but its branches finish at the end of the seventh heaven. Nothing of the creation of this world, at least, is beyond the Sidrat al Muntah, right? The only thing that is beyond it is the throne and the one who is above the throne. And then he saw Jibreel alayhi salam in his original form. Jibreel had 600 wings, he blocked the entire horizons, and he said in another hadith, in Tabari, from the feathers of Jibreel's wings, pearls and corals were dripping. Allah says in the Quran, most of the angels, Allah says, two or three or four wings. But Jibreel alayhi salam, in this hadith we learn he has 600 wings. Three things he saw one after the other at the highest level. Number one, Sidrat al Muntaha. Number two, Baytul Ma'mur. Number three, Jibreel. This is the reference in the Quran, Laqad ra'a min ayati rabbihil kubra. He saw of his major signs. And it is said that the Prophet ﷺ only saw Jibreel in his original form twice. Then Ibn Mas'ud said, the Prophet ﷺ was given three things. Number one, the five salah. We're going to come to that. Number two, Khawatimu Surat al Baqarah. The ending of Surat al Baqarah. And number three, Allah promised him that whoever worshipped him from his ummah without doing shirk, that he will be forgiven and caused to enter Jannah. And the Prophet ﷺ said that the last two verses of Surah Baqarah have been given them from underneath the throne of the treasure of Allah. And we know that whoever recites these two verses, Allah will uh, protect him. In another hadith he said, whoever recites these two verses on a nightly basis, يعني كفتاه, they're going to be enough for him. He doesn't need anything else. It was then that the Prophet ﷺ went to the gist of Al-Isra. And that is the divine appointment. In Sahih Bukhari, the Prophet ﷺ says, then I was caused to ascend forth in the singular, not Jibreel anymore. And I rose to a level where I could hear the pen writing. As the Prophet ﷺ said, the first thing that Allah created was the pen. And then Allah told the pen, Uktub. So the pen asked Allah, what should I write? And Allah said, write everything that will happen until the end, until Yawm Al-Qiyam. Write everything. He went beyond Jibreel. He went beyond even the Sidrat Al-Muntaha. And he heard the divine pen as it was writing in the book that Allah Azza wa Jal has with him. There is a book that Allah has above the throne. And therefore, it is, inshallah, legitimate to say that the Prophet ﷺ went to a level that no living creature has ever been to as far as we know. But we don't have any details about what was said except for the 50 salawat. 
that Allah Azza wa Jal فُرِضَتْ عَلَيَّ the Prophet Sallallahu said فُرِضَتْ عَلَيَّ السَّلَوَاتُ خَمْسِينَ صَلَاةً كُلَّ يَوْمٍ 50 salawat every single day and he goes back down and he meets Musa what did your Lord tell you for your ummah so here the Prophet Sallallahu says that my Lord told me that I should tell my ummah to pray 50 times a day here Musa says go back to your Lord and tell him to lower this because I have more experience than you with the Bani Israel and your ummah will not be able to do 50 times a day. The Prophet ﷺ looked at Jibreel wanting to get his opinion. The riwayah says, as if he's getting his opinion. And Jibreel nodded to him, yes, do that. So the Prophet ﷺ went back up. Now here is where the riwayah differ. Some of them say it went down 5, 5, 5. Others say it went down 10, 10, 10. But really the point is the same. And that is multiple times back and forth, back and forth, at least five times. And every time Musa is telling him the same thing, that go back to your Lord and ask him to lower it because I have tested the children of Israel and they will not be able to do this. Your ummah will not be able to do this. Until finally when he came back down with five, this was when Musa said it one more time and the Prophet ﷺ said, I have gone back and forth until I am embarrassed now, but I am content and happy. So when he said this, a voice called out. And this is the voice of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My faridha has been established and I have made things easier for my servants. It is five, but it shall be rewarded with 50. So the messenger is summoned to the presence of the divine. And what is then decreed? And that is the salah. It was so important that the messenger was called to the king of kings to receive the message directly from the divine. There is a controversy, did he see Allah or not? The strongest opinion is we'll talk about he did not see Allah, but he had a private meeting in which he saw the veil of Allah. And this is clearly proven that Abu Dhar al-Ghifari radiallahu ta'ala asked him directly, did you see your Lord? And the Prophet responded, there was light. How could I see him? There was the light of Allah's hijab. Because another hadith of Sahih Muslim says, Allah has a hijab of nur. If Allah were to lift this veil, then then the rays that come from his face would destroy everything that it sees. The beginning portions of Surah Al-Najm describe certain of these incidents. وَالنَّجْمِ إِذَا هَوَى مَا ضَلَّ صَاحِبُكُمْ وَمَا غَوَى وَمَا يَنْطِقُ عَنِ الْهَوَى That when the star, when it goes down, your companion has neither gone astray nor has he erred and he's not speaking from his imagination. What he is saying in هُوَ إِلَّا وَحْيٌ يُوحَ This is wahi from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not just the Quran, everything that he's seeing is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. عَلَّمَهُ شَدِيدُ الْقُوَى He has been taught by the one who is mighty in power. The reference is Jibreel. ذو مرة فاستوى. ذو مرة means he is free of any defect. فاستوى وهو بالأفق الأعلى means Jibreel revealed himself at the highest of heavens. ثم دنا فتدلى and then Jibreel came closer and closer. فكان قاب قوسين أو أدنى Jibreel was closer to the Prophet than two bows like you know bow and arrow. فأوحى إلى عبده ما أوحى after the encounter with Jibreel he moved on to an even higher encounter where Allah inspired his servant with whatever he inspired. There's secrecy here. ما كذب الفؤاد the chest is not lying in what it saw. Are you going to argue with him with what he saw? He saw of the most amazing miracles and signs of his Lord. Then the Prophet ﷺ goes back down and he tells us many things that he saw on the way down. And he says that then I saw heaven and hell. 